Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. Brought to you by Blue Sky Business Consulting. We discuss five questions in about 15 minutes. Hello again, everyone. I'm grateful that you've joined us today. Thanks for taking some time to be with us, and I'm excited to introduce our guest today. This is Daniel Rabinovich, and he is the co-founder of Underscore Games out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Daniel, thank you so much for taking some time today. I'm excited to hear a little bit more about Underscore Games. Tell the audience a little bit more about what you folks are endeavoring to do at Underscore Games. Yeah, well, first off, thank you so much for having me on the show, Sean. I always appreciate it. Um, so Underscore Games, we are a indie board game startup. We pretty much create tabletop games, card games, everything in between. Uh, we are launching our first product in this May uh, called Cubicle. It makes fun of the corporate culture in the workplace and is meant to help um, HR teams you know, help out their employee engagement. Oh, I love that. That's a great approach. Well, awesome. Congratulations on the new product launch and uh, congratulations on all of your business endeavors. That's fantastic. In fact, let's kind of just jump right into the questions. Our first question relates to what you're talking about. Daniel, as you've been building your business, what's a challenge that you've overcome that you're especially proud of? Yeah, so uh, I founded my startup uh, back when in 2020, when the pandemic first hit. Uh, obviously, it was a really tough time for startups. A lot of them were shifting towards remote culture and really were grappling with how do I engage and how do I manage um, all of my remote teams. Um, probably the biggest challenge was that, was the fact that we were kind of thrown in. Uh, I was still a high schooler, didn't really know what I was doing at that moment. Um, and on top of that, right, we have this whole culture of remote work that suddenly appeared. Um, so when I was hiring first out of LinkedIn and when I was building out my team, it wasn't quite sure how I should structure my management, how I should really structure um, engagement within my team. Uh, and it really, really became a, a grapple with it. It took about three years to really resolve. Um, I managed to overcome it really with, uh, and I'll get into it a little bit later about this uh, idea of communication and, and how I really learned how to not only use, uh, we use software such as like ClickUp, Google Drive, um, and then various different communication platforms like Slack and Discord. Uh, in order to really engage, but also using like voice calls, using uh, remote team calls. And then within those softwares, uh, you know, finding small little features such as little bots to make it a little bit more engaging for the remote workplace. So small things like that were uh, things that I learned over the uh, years that helped me really build up my team to a stronger team. That's awesome. I love that response. I love that answer. And uh, yeah, you you uh, you got started in an awkward time, and yeah, a lot of people moving out to, to uh, either a fully remote or a hybrid type model, which was a challenge for a lot of people to kind of figure out how to do that. So well done for figuring that out and having the success during a really unusual time in our uh, global history. So well done. All right, question number two, Daniel, how can leaders help foster creativity um, in their teams? All right. So this one's kind of interesting. Um, I think, you know, fostering creativity really comes down to what our company is all about, which is games. Um, games are a perfect way to showcase your creativity. I mean, the entire the entire process at which we build a game is the idea of spitballing ideas, constantly generating up new concepts. Um, one of the cool policies we have at our at our company is that um, whenever you have a new game idea, we literally just have a new channel that's created within our um, communication platform directly for it. So we're constantly have a new stream of line of ideas and all of those channels are open for you to be able to contribute your own ideas back towards them. Um, with games, right? We always hold, hold various different team building nights as well. And so those team building nights allow us to not only play video games together, but see what mechanics can we take from those to draw into our own games and, and build inspiration while at the same time, who doesn't love a, who doesn't love a good video game, right? So um, it goes back to the idea of the remote teams and how do we really engage them. But at the same time, those those same games do foster the creativity. And that's what um, makes a remote team like us so special because uh, it's the perfect mix of games and then um, the virtual environment. I love that. And you're right. You have kind of a unique opportunity because you are already in a very creative space, but also it's a fun environment. But I really like something that you said, Daniel, that I think is worth uh, highlighting and that is that you schedule time, those, those game nights together. And to me, that's a huge takeaway for the audience to, to pick up on is that you schedule it and you purposefully, intentionally make time to get together and have fun. And that's going to open things up and allow people to be more comfortable being creative. I love that. That's a great solution that you found. All right, question number three, 
kind of similar to question number two, but how can leaders help the team members learn to trust each other within the, the team or the company? Yeah, I think number one is really not being afraid of what others will say about you as a leader, um, especially if you're going in the direction that you know is most beneficial for everybody. And if you're truly caring towards all of your um, team members, no matter what their age are, um, no matter what their experience is, in the end, they will give it, give it back to you. So um, one thing that we practice very commonly here at Underscore is various different independent meetings between all of our sub departments. So um, that me or my co-founder are never present at those ones. And those kind of allow us to not only build leaders uh, within our like sub-management, so those that manage all of our our, our team leads, um, but at the same time, it allows those who are underneath the team leads to also trust each other and know that, okay, Daniel and Phil, they both trust us. You know, this is this is something, this isn't just a them and then they, we work for them. It's something where we work together as a project. Um, it goes back to the idea of games as well. So if you can make them feel like they're also contributing to the project, which everybody is, um, that's where it absolutely becomes something that's way more monumental than just uh, a singular product. It becomes a culmination of various different ideas. So, I mean, the trust really comes down to, do you trust them? And in return, I genuinely believe that if you have done everything in your power to make sure that you are doing the best for your team, then the team will come back, of course, and contribute for you as well. So it's a, it's definitely a, a uh, an environment where they would want to contribute if you make it that. That's awesome. You have a great approach to it. And I kind of liked where you mentioned very quickly that you allow them to have meetings with you and your co-founder not present. And that uh, shows trust and allows them to be a little bit more open so they can learn to trust each other. I like that. All right. Question number four. Is there a challenge that you kind of ran into that maybe perceived as a failure initially, but you turned it into a win? Absolutely. Um, I think within the new startup culture, it's really about how fast can you go and can you beat everybody else to uh, that finish line? Uh, when I first founded Underscore Games, uh, we had a game concept. We rushed really, really quickly to get it out on Kickstarter. One thing that we thought of and what we figured out later on um, and through various different courses that I, I've been taking later is it's not something, you know, with, with crowdfunding and, and when we're generating our audience, it's not something that you can do overnight and it's never going to become something overnight. And um, that's something that we learned the hard way, obviously, with our with our first um, sort of failure, I would I would even call it. We launched three months after we founded the LLC, which is which is absolutely crazy um, because we didn't have enough time to build our audience, right? We didn't have enough time to really think about what we needed in order to strategically get there. And we also didn't have the right team in order to do it. At that time, we had one graphic designer. Compare that to now, about three years later, right? Our team has expanded up to um, 10 plus uh, part-time employees. So we're getting you know, a variety of in culmination of new ideas. And then at the same time, we're able to generate so much more hype and so much more press and so much more outreach than we were previously before then. Um, so that's the biggest takeaway that we really have um, from that failure, that initial failure. Oh, I love it. And way to take a look at the uh, perceived negative, the failure and turn yeah. it into win. I love the attitude. All right, Daniel, last question. Tell us a little bit about your first job. Whew. So uh, this happened probably about two years ago, uh, but uh, I got my first internship at a software company called Inspirar.io um, and then a separate internship at uh, Shortlist.io. Inspirar is a uh, employee engagement um, company and then Shortlist is a uh, search engine optimization digital marketing agency company. Uh, essentially, uh, it, it was definitely a uh, new experience for me. Never, I never worked like a, like a, you know, formal job underneath, you know, somebody who was paying me and especially a job that wasn't just your average, you know, grocery store job. Um, I jumped right into things kind of, so probably my favorite story from there is I remember my first assignment was to kind of do some analysis on their social media analytics. And I remember when I pulled everything up, I put everything into a really nice, PowerPoint presentation. I worked probably about four hours on it. I put everything into there. And I remember when I presented it to my boss and the first thing that he told me was, was Daniel, why'd you make this so fancy? I just expected you to just kind of put everything together and then that's it, present it. It's only going to be for internal use. And then I was like, well, damn, I was like, wow, I, I can't believe that I had to have, uh, it was that easy. I didn't really have to do all of this. And so it really helped me figure out that, you know, not everything has to be perfect. And that was probably the biggest takeaway that I got from there. But 
um, I've been happy ever since. I mean, he's still my boss and I, I, I work whenever I can for him. So uh, great experience, great guy. And I mean, I, I applied a lot of those lessons now back to my own startup. So it's absolutely perfect. Oh, that's great. That's a great story. I love how you've taken some lessons from that opportunity and applied them to your current opportunity with uh, underscore games. That's awesome. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for taking time to be on the podcast today. How can people find you? Yeah. So uh, we're launching cubicle in May, end of May. So in about three weeks from this recording uh, and you can find it on cubiclegame.com um, or separately um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Daniel Rabinovich and uh, you feel free to connect, shoot me a message and uh, we'll definitely chat. Sounds great. Thanks so much. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us again. Have a great day and we wish you well. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, go to teamengagementpodcast.com. We also invite you to follow or subscribe to our podcast wherever you may be listening or watching. Is your business thriving? Go to tbs-score.com to find out. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.